Ryzen stock coolers are good, but aftermarket coolers are better. Howdy, howdy guys, Ponchato here, and today we're gonna take a look at four AM4 coolers for under 40 US dollars. Starting from the left, we have the Cooler Master Hyper T2 Mini Tower Cooler, Raijin Tech Lido in black, Cooler Master Hyper T12 LED, Deep Cool Gamex 400, and finally the stock AMD Wraith Stealth Cooler that comes with the Ryzen 3 1200, 1300X, and Ryzen 5 1400. First up, we'll look at the Cooler Master Hyper T2. It's a mini tower cooler released in 2014 and is compatible with all common sockets, including LGA 1151 and AM4. However, it can only be mounted horizontally on AM4 motherboards. It's only 140 millimeters tall, just wider than its fan at 93 millimeters, and fairly shallow at only 80 millimeters deep. It comes with a 92 millimeter fan with no LED rated for a minimum of 800 RPM up to a max of 2800 and utilizes a basic sleeve bearing. The heatsink comes with two heat pipes, 6 mm in diameter, and you can see here the interesting design. The heat pipes loop completely around the cooler, terminating at the base rather than at the top. The cooling fins have a cutout on both sides for adding another fan and push-pull configuration, but the Hyper T2 only comes with one pair of fan mounts, probably as a cost-saving measure. Inside the box, you'll find the warranty card and installation manual, Intel mounting bracket, AMD spring clamp, and included thermal paste and mounting screws. Cooler Master rates it for a 130 watt TDP, roughly double that of a typical stock cooler. This is the smallest and cheapest cooler in the lineup today, barring the Wraith Stealth, which you can't buy separately anyway. Next in the lineup is the Lido sent from Raijintech. Released in May of 2017, this is the newest cooler in the lineup and is compatible with LGA 1151 and AM4 sockets. It can be mounted vertically on AM4, but you'll have to contact Raijintech for the mounting bracket. Otherwise, out of the box, it can only be mounted horizontally. This all-black full tower cooler comes in at 157mm tall, just short enough to fit into most micro ATX cases. It's 122mm wide and a mere 76mm deep, actually the thinnest cooler we're looking at here today. Its 120mm fan comes with your choice of blue, white, or red LEDs. It's rated for 800 to 1800 RPM and comes with a sleeve bearing. One cool feature is their inclusion of rubber mounting screws to isolate the fan's vibration from the rest of the computer. The cooler has three heat pipes 8mm in diameter and includes a second set of fan mounts for a push-pull configuration. Inside the box you'll find the installation manual and warranty card along with the mounting hardware, backplate, Intel and AMD mounting brackets, and included thermal paste. Regentech doesn't rate it for a specific TDP, but being a 120mm tower cooler, it's probably around 130 watts. Third on the list is the Cooler Master Hyper 212 LED, launched in August of 2016. It's compatible with all major sockets including LGA 1151 and AM4, but it can't be mounted horizontally on AM4 systems, and as far as I can tell, Cooler Master doesn't offer a kit to allow that. It's 160mm tall, the tallest cooler we're looking at today, 120mm wide, and 84mm deep. It has a 120mm fan with red LEDs rated for 600 to 1600 RPM and comes with a rifle bearing, basically a sleeve bearing that circulates lubricant a little bit better. The cooler has four heat pipes, 6mm in diameter, and includes a second pair of fan mounts for a push-pull setup. Inside the box you'll find the installation manual and warranty card along with all the mounting hardware, screws, and brackets for AMD and Intel systems. It also comes with a pretty neat backplate. The backplate has little plastic clips that hold the mounting screws in place to make installation easier. On AM4 systems, however, you'll need to leave the motherboard's stock backplate and mounting clips on because the Hyper 212 LED uses AMD's spring clamp system to mount to the AM4 socket. Cooler Master doesn't rate it for a specific TDP, but it's a 120mm tower cooler, so it'll be somewhere around 130 watts. Last but not least, but definitely oldest, is the Gamex 400 from Deepcool. This thing was released in March of 2012. It's practically ancient and still one of the most popular CPU coolers out there. It's compatible with basically all modern sockets and includes an AM4 mounting bracket out of the box that lets you mount it vertically, with the hot air exhausting towards the back of the case rather than the top. It's 155mm tall, 135mm wide, the widest by a pretty big margin, and 80mm deep. The Gamex 400 has a 120mm fan with blue LEDs, it's rated for 900 to 1500 RPM, the smallest RPM range today, and has a hydro bearing, which could mean it's actually just a sleeve, or it could mean it's a legit fluid dynamic bearing. The only way to find out for sure would be to cut the fan open and look, but Deepcool is a big enough name that I trust them. The heatsink has four heat pipes, 6mm in diameter, and includes a second set of fan mounting brackets for a push-pull setup. 
Inside the box, you'll find the AM4 mounting bracket, Intel LGA 1150X clips, LGA 2011 or 2066 clips, and the second set of fan mounts. Deepcool rates the Gamex 400 for a 130 watt TDP, par for 120 millimeter tower coolers. To give a point of reference, I'll be comparing these coolers to AMD's stock Wraith Stealth, the smallest of the Ryzen stock coolers. It was released with the Ryzen 5 1400 in April of 2017, and it's fundamentally the same as most stock coolers. Top-down airflow, dimensions that basically fit inside the footprint of the mounting holes, and it's only 50 millimeters tall. It has a 92 millimeter fan rated for 600 to 2000 RPM with a sleeve bearing and no LEDs. Since it's just a solid heatsink, there are no heat pipes, and AMD rates it for a 65 watt TDP. That's about half that of the other coolers here, but it's by no means a slouch. This is a really good stock cooler. The test setup today is my Ryzen 3 1200 overclocked to 4.1 GHz at 1.35 volts on an MSI B350M Gaming Pro motherboard resting on my desk in open air. Because I'll be measuring sound levels and recording audio of the coolers, I'm using a passively cooled GT1030 and Seasonic Focus Plus 850FX power supply which can run fanless under about 30% load. The only noise coming from the system is from the CPU cooler itself. Sound levels measured in DBA and the audio recordings were taken from 4 inches in front of the fans. Recording this close ensures that background noise is effectively overpowered to give a more accurate level for comparison. Finally, all coolers were installed with Deepcool Z5 thermal paste and all temperatures are reported as deltas, degrees above ambient temperature. Now let's look at the idle results of the coolers. Temperatures were measured after 15 minutes of no load on the desktop. As you can see, basically all of the coolers were nearly silent at idle, at most one decibel above background noise. In terms of temperature deltas, AMD's stock cooler came in dead last, 10 degrees over ambient. Three of the tower coolers, the Hyper 212 LED, Hyper T2, and Lido all hit 2.8 degrees above ambient, and the Gamex 400 was the best performer at idle, only 1.5 degrees above the ambient temperature. Here are the recordings of the coolers at idle. First up, the Wraith Stealth. Next, the Cooler Master Hyper T2. Here's the Rijintec Lido. Next is the Cooler Master Hyper 212 LED. And finally, the Deep Cool Gamex 400. Now we'll look at temperatures under load at maximum RPM to see the most cooling and lowest temperatures achievable with these coolers. Starting from the bottom with the Wraith Stealth, we have a delta of 54 degrees Celsius. That means the Ryzen 3 hit nearly 80 degrees at an ambient temperature of 24. That's well below AMD's stated maximum temperature of 95, but it's still hot by most people's standards. The trade-off is it was extremely quiet, only 47 decibels. Next up is the Hyper T2 with a delta of 40.5, a significant improvement over the Wraith Stealth, but it comes at the cost of 56 decibels. Not unbearable, but certainly not quiet. The Hyper 212 LED and Lido drop a few degrees off that and lower noise a bit, but the Gamex 400 is in another class, only 52 decibels and less than 33 degrees Celsius delta. The measured load temperature was under 60, which is excellent for such a highly overclocked chip. Now here are the recordings of the coolers at maximum RPM. First up, the Wraith Stealth. Next, the Cooler Master Hyper T2. Next up, the Red Gentech Lido. Here's the Cooler Master Hyper T12 LED. And finally, here's the Deepcool Gamex 400. This graph is the measured RPM versus PWM signal sent to the fan, and here the absolute values aren't what we're looking for. The point of this graph is to show the quality of the speed controller built into the fans, basically how well do they allow you to control speed. The ideal result is a linear increase from 0% PWM to 100%, giving you the finest granularity over RPM, and therefore cooling and noise. 
the Wraith Stealth's controller is very close to this ideal, essentially linear RPM increase between 0 and 80%. It's interesting to note that the lowest and highest PWM percentages are usually flatline. For example, the Hyper 212 LED's fan hits its minimum RPM at 30% PWM. Lower the speed anymore in your motherboard's fan control and the RPM won't go down. Here we'll look at temperature deltas plotted against RPM. On the surface, this is more for satisfying curiosity because RPM on its own means almost nothing. Two fans running at the same RPM can have wildly different noise levels and even different levels of airflow, though fans of the same size tend to have similar airflow at a given RPM. What this graph really does is show you the law of diminishing returns for some coolers. The Hyper T2 is the best example of this. Increasing from 950 to 1150 RPM drops the temperature delta by 4 degrees but increasing from 2300 to 2500, the same 200 RPM increase, only drops the delta by 0.2. What this shows is that the upper limit of cooling here isn't dictated by the fan, but rather how effective the heatsink is at moving heat. If the heatsink can only transfer, for example, 80 watts, it doesn't matter how much air you push through it, it can only transfer so much energy per second. In layman's terms, the important real-life conclusion you can draw from this is that adding a second fan to the Hyper T2 or any cooler with a graph that looks like this will not improve its maximum cooling performance. It may be quieter or cooler at lower RPMs, but the limiting factor for maximum cooling here is the heat pipes, not airflow. Now idle and max RPM numbers are interesting, but here is the most useful useful graph. This is the temperature delta plotted against noise. Ultimately, these are the most important measurements that matter in the real world. How loud is it, and how well does it cool? It also makes it very easy to see the most effective coolers. The lowest and leftmost coolers cool the most and make the least noise. You can see up at the top the Wraith Stealth in red with a very short line. It couldn't keep the CPU at a safe temperature under about 50% speed, which is why its line is cut short. One interesting thing here is that the Lido and Hyper T2 are very close in performance. Despite the Lido having a 120mm fan, it's only slightly cooler and quieter than the Cooler Master with a 92mm fan. I have a feeling this is due to a poor seal between the Lido's fan and the heatsink. A lot of air escapes out the sides. This graph also shows diminishing returns even more clearly than the Delta versus RPM graph. For example, the Gamex 400 only drops 3 degrees Celsius between minimum and maximum fan speed, but adds 7 decibels to the noise. Basically, small increases in RPM at low speeds have a larger effect on temperatures than small increases in RPM at high speeds. In order of price, the most expensive cooler here was the Rigintech Lido at around $35. The Cooler Master Hyper 212 LED and Deep Cool Gamex 400 are around $26, and the Cooler Master Master Hyper T2 is the least expensive by a pretty long shot, only around $16. If you're overclocking a lower power chip like a Ryzen 3 and you just want the cheapest cooler that can safely max out your overclock, the Hyper T2 is a good choice. It's quiet at idle and will keep your CPU well under 80 degrees, which is a safe temperature for all modern processors. I'd call the Deepcool Gamex 400 the overall best cooler and the one I'd recommend especially for higher power processors like a Ryzen 5 or Core i7. It kept my Ryzen 3 at only 56 degrees Celsius and never raised the noise above 52 decibels. The thing I love most is that you can leave the fan at its minimum RPM and it won't overheat a processor like the Ryzen 3, and at that speed it's almost inaudible, which, if you're a stickler for noise like me, is fantastic. Click the links in the description if you want to pick up any of these coolers. If you want to get notified of new videos as soon as they're up, hit subscribe and click the bell icon to enable notifications. So guys, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe, and if you have any questions on these coolers or the results, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I hope I helped, and I'll see you in the next video.